Gerard Aro is the French ambassador to the United States, and he joins us on set right now. First of all, uh, Mr. Ambassador, on behalf of uh, all of us at Fox News and our viewers, our condolences uh, to the attack and to the victims of the attack that happened in your country. We wish the best for you in this pursuit of these suspects. I know you, you're not keeping up to, to date on, on the immediate uh, chase for these two. Have you ever, though, uh, seen any sort of a manhunt that, that uh, is similar to this in, in your lifetime? No, I don't think so. You know, uh, the, the, the problem, the challenge that we are facing is that we have thousands of youth who are radicalized in, in France and, and in Europe and uh, uh, we can't monitor 24-7, we can't arrest them for, for their opinion and we don't know whether they are going to cross the, the, to cross the red line. On the top of that, you have thousands of youth, Europeans going to Syria where they are military trained, they are coming back, they are radicalized, they are rapidly anti-Semitic. So it's, it's quite a challenge. Yet, your country and, and your boss, uh, President Hollande, has agreed to allow 30,000 more immigrants over the next two years from Syria into your country. Explain that to me. Well, the problem is that one million of, of, of migrants have entered Europe in the last months. So in a sense, we have to share the burden. You know, uh, Sweden, Germany, Austria have accepted uh, a disproportionate uh, uh, number of, of migrants. So there is a sort of, I should say, solidarity with our European friends. Yet you maintain open borders across uh, the EU, and, and many security officials say this is a huge impediment to tracking down terrorists. No, I think the question is on the table now. First, uh, you, you're right. First, we have the external borders of the European Union, which have to be better controlled. Uh, but in the European Union, you know, since there is a state of emergency, uh, I think a lot of countries have reimposed uh, internal, uh, internal border controls. I think in the coming weeks, uh, with, uh, between European countries, we will have to talk about it. You face in, in your country, as we do in this country, uh, preserving the balance between uh, civil liberties and security. In your country, you have, uh, at last count, 124 people under investigation. You've conducted more than 1,230 searches, some of them very, very aggressively. What are you doing to assure your people that their civil liberties are preserved in the face of very aggressive police tactics? Now, first, it's a state of emergency which has been uh, voted by the parliament for three months. So first, it's a limited time, three months, where it's true that the police will have extraordinary powers. But, it's, uh, but nevertheless, whatever the police is doing, it will be eventually under the control of the judge. Many people say that terrorism is something which transcends the generations. It's passed down from one generation to the next. The West has a very, very short attention span. You said that this process lasts only three months. Are we out of sync with the terrorists? desires and demands? Well, the, the, the problem is that we consider that the terrorist uh, threat is directly linked to the Syrian crisis. So for the moment, I think the priority that we have, and that's the reason why President Hollande came to the U.S. and now is going to Moscow, is to try to transmit a feeling of urgency to all the countries that we have to solve the, the Syrian crisis as quickly as possible because it is undermining the stability, the security and the unity of Europe. We have to act right now. In the aftermath of the Paris attacks, uh, one of our presidential candidates on the Republican side, Donald Trump, the leading Republican candidate thus far, uh, tweeted uh, something to the effect that Paris, the slaughter occurred in a country that has some of the toughest gun control laws in the world. You were angered by that. You tweeted and then deleted a response to it saying that Trump is a, quote, vulture. And you said this message is repugnant in its lack of any human decency. Explain that to me. Well, actually, uh, I received this message just at the moment we were, you know, we were under the shock of the attack. So I, uh, I am a fighter, even if I'm a diplomat. So I decided to, to, re to respond the way you did. But actually, I, I, I erased the tweet, uh, I think, 10 minutes later, saying, you know, it's, it's, not, it's of no use. But of course, I am supporting the, the substance of, of it. It doesn't make sense. You know, it was a theater, a theater hall. Imagine a theater hall and suddenly people entered with machine gun and are really killing the people. You know, it doesn't, you know, really, it's only in the movies that somebody is using his gun to defend himself. Uh, last question, we've got about 30 seconds left here. What is it that you need from the United States that you're not getting? We have the support of the U.S. administration. What we need, as I have said, is a sense of urgency. 
we need to solve the Syrian crisis right now. We don't have the time to wait. Is the president offering that sense of urgency, our president? Yes. He has, uh, when meeting President Hollande, he has said that he wants to step in uh, the military efforts, the U.S. military efforts in Syria. Ambassador Arro, thank you very much for coming tonight. I really appreciate that. Thank Good you very you. much.